I'm here. I'm here. I've come back. I'm all right. It's all right. I've come back. What on earth are you talking about, Lucy? Haven't you been wondering where I was? You'll have to hide for longer than that if you want people to start looking for you. But I've been away for hours and hours. I hardly notice when you're here. Now, now. Lucy's having fun, Edmund. No, I'm not. I mean, I was, but I... What? Well, what do you mean, Lucy? Exactly what I said. I went into the wardrobe and was gone for hours. Don't be silly, Lucy. We've only just come out of that room a moment ago. Hold on, Susan. Let her have her fun. That's all it is. Right, Lucy? Wrong. It's, it's a magic wardrobe. Come, I'll show you. You said magic? Yes. There are woods inside, and it's snowing, and there's a fawn, and there's a witch, and it's called Narnia. Come and see. Now, go in and see for yourselves. Why, Lucy, it's just an ordinary wardrobe. Look. You can feel the back of it. <laughs> Good joke, Lucy. You really fooled us. I must admit, we almost believed you. But it wasn't a joke at all, really. It was different a moment ago. Honest, it was. I promise. Come, Lucy. You're going a bit too far. You've had your fun. And you better drop it now. <laughs> Snow, woods, witch. She's got a real problem. I don't care what they say. It may be just full of coats now, but it was Narnia then. It's only been one week since we came to visit with the professor. And if it hadn't rained that day, the whole thing never would have happened. We were exploring the house. open a little. This must be a simply enormous wardrobe. What's that? Why, it's snow. This is very strange. Why, it's just like branches. wrong. Good evening. Goodness gracious me. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Excuse me. I don't want to be inquisitive, but should I be right in thinking that you are a daughter of Eve? My name's Lucy. But you are, uh, forgive me, uh, you are a, what they call a girl? Of course I'm a girl. You are, in fact, human? Of course I'm human. To be sure. To be sure, how stupid of me. But I've never seen a son of Adam or a daughter of Eve before. I am delighted to meet, uh, that is to say, uh, uh, absolutely delighted. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tumnus. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Tumnus. Oh! And may I ask, Oh, Lucy, a daughter of Eve, how you have come into Narnia? Narnia? What's that? Well, this is the land of Narnia, where we are now. All that lies between the lamppost and the great castle Cape Paravel on the eastern sea. And you, you have come from the wild woods of the west. Well, 
I got into the wardrobe in the spare room. Ah, if I'd only worked harder at geography when I was a little fawn, I should no doubt know all about those strange countries. It's too late now. But they aren't countries at all. It's only just back there. At least, I'm not sure. It's summer there. Really? It's winter in Narnia and has been for ever so long. And we both catch cold if we stand here talking in the snow. Daughter of Eve, from the far land of Spare Oom, where eternal summer reigns around the bright city of Ward Robe. How would it be if you came and had tea with me? Why, thank you very much, Mr. Tumnus. But I was wondering whether I ought to be getting back. It's only just around the corner. And there'll be a roaring fire, and tea, and toast, and cake. Well, it's very kind of you, but I shan't be able to stay long. If you will take my arm, daughter of Eve, that's the way. Off we go! Mr. Tumnus, I'm so sorry to stop you, but I really must go home. I only meant to stay for a few minutes. It's no good now, you know. What do you mean? I've got to go home at once. The others will be wondering where I am. Mr. Tumnus, whatever is the matter? <laughs> Mr. Tumnus, what is the matter? <laughs> Dear Mr. Tumnus, tell me what's wrong. <laughs> Mr. Tumnus, stop it at once. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Why are you crying? I'm crying because I'm such a bad fawn. I don't think you're a bad fawn. I think you're a good fawn. You're the nicest fawn I've ever met. Oh, you wouldn't say that if you knew. What have you done? I've... I've... I'm in the pay of the White Witch. The White Witch? Who is she? Why? 
It is she that has Narnia under her icy thumb. It's she that makes it always winter and never Christmas. How awful. But what did she pay you for? Oh, that's the worst of it. I am a kidnapper for her. I mean, look at me. Would you believe that I am the sort of fawn to meet a poor innocent child in the woods and pretend to be friendly with it and invite it home to my cave, all for the sake of lulling it to sleep and then handing it over to the White Witch? No, I'm sure you wouldn't do anything of the sort. But I have. But you're sorry. And I'm sure you'll never do it again. Don't you understand? I'm doing it now. This very moment. What do you mean? I had orders from the White Witch that if ever I saw a human, I was to catch it and hand it over to her. And you were the first I ever met. I pretended to be your friend and asked you to tea. And all the time, I've been meaning to wait until you were asleep and then go and tell her. Oh, but you won't, Mr. Thomas. You won't, will you? And if I don't, she'll find out and have my tail cut off and my horn sawn off and my beard plucked out. And if she's specially angry, she'll turn me into stone and I shall be only a statue in her horrible house. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Tumnus, but please let me go home. Of course I will. I've got to. I hadn't known what humans were like before I met you. Of course I can't give you up to the witch, but we must be off at once. I'll see you back to the lamppost. I suppose you can find your own way from there back to Spare Oom and Ward Robe. I'm sure I can. We must go as quietly as we can. The woods are full of her spies. In fact, some of the trees are on her side. You know your way from here, a daughter of Eve? Yes, I can see the wardrobe door. Then be off home, as quick as you can. I do hope you won't get into trouble on my account. Farewell, daughter of Eve. Perhaps I may keep the handkerchief? Of course, dear Mr. Tumnus. you locking all the closets in the house, Lucy? Ha, ha, ha. Maybe you'll find other new countries. Cut it out, Edwin. Lucy's had enough of your teasing. Look, it's still raining, and... Of course. It would be raining. And we can't go play outside. Let's play hide and seek. Let's. I'll be it. All right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Going in there again. I wonder. Maybe Narnia and Mr. Tumnus were just a dream. I'll open the door and scare. Aha! Lucy! Where are you? I know you're here. Lucy? What's that? My goodness. She was right. This is what Lucy was talking about. Where is she? Lucy! Lucy! I'm here too! It's me, Edmund! She's angry about all the things I've been saying lately. Lucy! I'm sorry I didn't believe you. Where are you? Silly Lucy. Probably sulking somewhere.
name's Edmund. Is that how you address a queen? I beg your pardon, Your Majesty. I didn't know. Not know the Queen of Narnia? Ah, you shall know us better hereafter. But I repeat, what are you? Please, Your Majesty. I don't know what you mean. Are you an overgrown dwarf that has cut off its beard? I'm a boy. A boy? Do you mean you're a son of Adam? Answer me once and for all, or I shall lose my patience. Are you human? Yes, Your Majesty. And how, pray, did you come to enter my dominions? Well, I... I came in through a wardrobe. Hmm. A door from the world of men. I have heard of such things. This may wreck all. <laughs> but he's only one, and he is easily dealt with. My poor child, how cold you look. Come, sit with me here on the sled. I will put my robe around you, and we will talk. Perhaps something hot to drink? Hmm? Would you like that? Yes, please, Your Majesty. And would you like something to eat? Some Turkish delight? Yes, please. Tell me, do you have any brothers and sisters? One brother. Two sisters. One sister Lucy has been here too. Lucy's been here and met a fawn. Your sister has been here in Narnia, you say, and she met a fawn? Yes, she said she met a fawn, but I didn't believe her. Does anyone else know of this? No, only Susan and Peter. They don't believe it. You are sure there are four of you? Two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve. I should so much like to see your brother and your two sisters. Will you bring them to me? I'll try. Because if you did come again, bringing them with you, of course, I'd be able to give you some more Turkish delight. Why not now? I can't do it now. The magic will work only once in my own house. However, it would be another matter. Why can't we go to your house now? It is a lovely place, my house. Whole rooms full of Turkish delight. And what's more, I have no children of my own. I want a nice boy whom I could bring up as a prince and who would be king of Narnia when I am gone. While he was prince, he would wear a gold crown and eat Turkish delight all day long. But why not now? Oh, but if I took you there now, I shouldn't see your brother and sisters. I very much want to meet them. You are to be the prince and later the king and your brother will be a duke and your sisters duchesses. There's nothing special about them. And anyway, I could always bring them some other time. No, you must go back to your own country now and come back to me another day. With them, you understand? It is no good coming without them. Now, when you come back, look for those two little hills rising above the trees. Well, my house is between those two hills. I might have to be very angry with you if you come alone. Uh, do my best. And, by the way, 
You needn't tell them about me. Make it a surprise for them. Just bring them along to the two hills. A clever boy like you will easily think of some excuse for doing that. If your sister has met one of the fawns, she may have heard strange <laughs> stories about me. Nasty stories that might make her afraid to come to me. Fawns will say anything, you know. Could I please have just one piece of Turkish delight to eat on the way home? No, no, no. You must wait till next time. Next time! Next time! Don't forget! Come soon! Oh, Edmund! Edmund, so you got in too! Isn't it wonderful? And now? Okay, Lucy. I see you're right. And it is a magic wardrobe after all. I'll say I'm sorry if you like. But where on earth have you been all this time? I've been looking for you everywhere. If I'd known you'd got in, I'd have waited for you. I've been having lunch with dear Mr. Thomas, the fawn, and he's very well. And the white witch has done nothing to him for letting me go. So he thinks she can't have found out, and perhaps everything is going to be all right after all. She's a terrible person, you know. Calls herself the Queen of Narnia, though she has no right to be queen at all. And she can turn people into stone and do all kinds of horrible things. Who told you all that stuff? Mr. Tumnus, the fawn. You can't always believe what fawns say. Who said so? Everyone knows it. Ask anybody you like. But it's silly standing here in the snow. Let's go home. Yes, let's. Oh, Edmund, I am glad you've got here, too. Now both of us can tell the others about Narnia. Come on, let's find the others. What a lot we have to tell them and what wonderful adventures we'll have. Peter, Susan! It's true, it's all true. Edmund has seen it too. There is a country we can get to, through the wardrobe. We were both there. Go on, Edmund, tell them all about it. What's this all about, Edmund? Tell us, Edmund. Oh, yes. Lucy and I have been playing. Pretending. Ah, yes. We've been playing. Yes. Only pretending that everything she said was true. Just for fun, of course. There's really nothing there. <laughs> there she goes again. What's the matter with her? That's the worst thing about young kids. They always... Look here, shut up, you. You've been terrible to Lucy ever since he started this nonsense about the wardrobe. Just leave Lucy alone. But it's all nonsense. Perhaps, but what good do you think you'll do by teasing her? I thought, I thought... You didn't think at all, it's just spite. Stop it, both of you. Fighting won't make things any better. They're always on her side. Let's go talk to the professor. Now, how do you know that your sister's story is not true? Oh, but, but Edmund said they'd only been pretending. Does your experience lead you to regard your brother or your sister as the more reliable? I mean, which is more truthful? Up till now, I'd have said Lucy every time. I say the same as Peter, but all this about the woods and the fawn... Yes, 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 now that is more than I know. But a charge of lying against someone whom you have always found truthful. Uh, now, that is a very serious thing. But uh, how could it be true, sir? Why do you say that? Well, for one thing, if it was real, why doesn't everyone find this country every time they go to the wardrobe? What has that to do with it? Well, sir, if things are real, they're there all the time. Are they? But there was no time. Lucy had no time to have gone anywhere, even if there were such a place. She came running after us the very moment we were out of the room. It was less than a minute, and she claims to have been away for hours. That is the very thing that makes her story so likely to be true. 
if there is a door in this house that leads to some other world. And I should warn you that this is a strange house, and even I know very little about it. I should not be at all surprised to find that that other world had a separate time of its own. So that however long you stayed there, it would never take up any of our time. If she had been pretending, she would have hidden for a reasonable time before coming out and telling her story. Do you really mean there could be a Narnia? Other worlds all over the place? Just around the corner? Like that? Nothing is more probable. But what are we to do? My dear young lady, that is one thing I cannot tell you. I think Lucy ought to be the leader. She deserves it. Think you're so smart. Nobody treats me that way. Where are we going, Lucy? What about going to see Mr. Tunnis? He's the nice barn I told you about. All right, yeah, let's go. I'll get even. You watch. I'll get you. Just wait. He's not only the nicest fawn I've ever met, he's... <gasps> oh, no! Poor Mr. Tumnus! What a mess. Not much good coming here. What's this? There's something written on it. The former occupant of these premises, Fawn Tumnus, is under arrest and awaiting his trial on a charge of high treason against Her Imperial Majesty Jardis, Queen of Narnia, Chatelaine of Care Paravel, Empress of the Lone Islands, etc. Also of com comforting Her Majesty's enemies, harboring spies and fraternizing with humans. Signed, Fenris Ulf. Captain of the secret police. Long live the queen. I don't know if I'm going to like this place after all. Who is this queen, Lucy? She's cast a spell over the whole country so that it's always winter here and never Christmas. I, I wonder if there's any point in going on. It doesn't seem particularly safe here. Let's go home. Oh, but we can't, we can't. Don't you see? We can't just leave. After all, it's on my account that the poor fawn has got into this trouble. We must try to save him. A lot we could do. Let's get out of here. Quiet, you. What do you think, Susan? I have a terrible feeling Lucy's right. I think we must try to do something for Mr. Tumnus. I think you're right. We'll have to go on. What a waste. I'm hungry. Shh. Look. There's something moving among the trees. Over there, to the left. There it goes again. I saw it too. It's still there. It's just gone behind that big tree. What is it? Whatever it is, it's dodging us. It doesn't want to be seen. Look, look, quick. There it is. What's it like? It's, it looks like an animal. I know what it is. It's a beaver. I saw the tail. It wants us to go to it, and it's warning us not to make a noise. I think it's a nice beaver. Yes, 
do we know? Shouldn't we risk it? I mean, it's no good just standing here. Come on, let's give it a try. I'll keep close together. We ought to be a match for one beaver if it turns out to be an enemy. If you're not too high and mighty to talk to me, I have something to say which you'd better listen to. What is it? Hush, not so loud. It's no sense frightening the girls. Do you realize what we're doing? What? We're following a guide we know nothing about. How do we know which side that animal is on? Maybe he's leading us into a trap. That's a nasty idea. Is it? Still, why should it be on the wrong side? If it comes to that, which is the right side? How do we know that the barn is right and the queen is wrong? We don't really know anything about either. The fawn saved Lucy. He told Lucy he did. But do we know? And another thing, does anyone know the way home from here? I hadn't thought of that. Further in, come further in. Right in here, we're not safe in the open. Are you the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve? We're some of them. Shh, not so loud, please. We're not safe even here. Why? Who are you afraid of? There's no one here but us. There are the trees. They're always listening. Most of them are on our side, but there are trees that would betray us to her. You know who I mean. How do we know you're a friend? Not meaning to be rude, Mr. Beaver, but you see, we're strangers. Quite right, quite right. Here is my token. Oh, of course. It's my handkerchief, the one I gave to poor Mr. Tumnus. That's right, poor fellow. He got wind of the arrest before it actually happened and handed this over to me. He said that if anything happened to him, I must meet you here and take you on. They say Aslan is on the move. Perhaps has already landed. What about Mr. Tumnus? Where is he? Shh. Not here. I must bring you where we can talk. Here we are, and it looks as if Mrs. Beaver is expecting us. What a lovely dam. Merely a trifle, merely a trifle. And it isn't really finished. Between those two hills, whole rooms of Turkish delight, you will be king of Narnia. Turkish delight. Turkish delight. Turkish delight. I'll lead the way. Be careful and don't slip. Here we are, Mrs. Beaver. I found them. At last, to think that I should live to see this day. Oh, welcome. Come in, come in. Dinner is on the table. Here, we must hang your coats in the closet. Go ahead, my dears. Sit down, sit down. <coughs> It's snowing again, and it's all the better. Because it means we shan't have any visitors. And if anyone should have been trying to follow you, why, he won't find any tracks. Now we can get to business. Please, tell us what happened to Mr. Tumnus. There's no doubt he was arrested by the police. But where's he been taken to? To her castle. And not many taken in there ever come out again. Mm, statues, full of statues it is. People she's turned, turned into stone. We must do something to save him. Dearie, there's no chance of getting into that castle against her will. And less chance of ever coming out alive. This fawn saved my sister at his own risk, Mr. Beaver. We can't just leave him to be, to be turned into stone. It's no good, son of Adam, no good your trying of all people. But now that Aslan is on the move... Oh, yes. Tell us about Aslan. 
Who is Aslan? Aslan? Why, he's the king. He's the lord of the whole wood. But not often here, you understand. Never in my time or my father's time. But the word has reached us that he has come back. He is in Narnia at the moment. He'll settle the White Queen, all right. It is she, not you, that will save Mr. Tumnish. Won't she turn him into stone, too? <laughs> Lord love you, son of Adam, what a simple thing to say. Turn him into stone? Oh, if she can stand on her own two feet and look him in the face, it'll be the most she can do. And more than I expect of her. No, no, he'll put all to rights, as it says in an old rhyme in these parts. Wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bears his teeth, winter meets its death. And when he shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. You'll understand when you see him. But shall we see him? That's why I brought you here. I'm to lead you where you shall meet him. Is, is he a man? Aslan a man? Certainly not. I tell you, he is the king of the wood and the son of the great emperor beyond the sea. Don't you know who is the king of beasts? Aslan is a lion. Is it safe? I feel scared about meeting a lion. That you will, dearie, and no mistake. If there's anyone who can appear before Aslan without their knees knocking, they're either braver than most or else just silly. Then he isn't safe? Safe? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe. But he's good. I'm anxious to see him, even if I do feel frightened. That's right, and so you shall. Word has been sent that you are to meet him tomorrow at the stone table. It's down the river, a good step from here. I'll take you to it. But meanwhile, what about poor Mr. Tumnus? The quickest way to help him is by going to meet Aslan. Once he's with us, then we can begin doing things. Not that we don't need you, too. For that's another of the old rhymes. When Adam's flesh and Adam's bone sits at Care Paravel in throne, the evil time will be over and done. The witch's reign must be near the end now that he's come and you've come. We've heard of Aslan coming into these parts before, long ago. Nobody can say when, but there's never been one of your race here before. That's what I don't understand, Mr. Beaver. I mean, isn't the witch herself human? She'd like us to believe it, and it's on that that she bases her claim to be queen. But she's no daughter of Eve, no, no. There isn't a drop of real human blood in the witch. That's why she's bad all through. True enough, Mrs. Beaver. She's been watching for you this many a year, and if she knew there were four of you, she'd be more dangerous still. What's four got to do with it? Because of another prophecy at Castle Care Paraval. There are four thrones. And when two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve sit on those four thrones, then it will be the end, not only of the White Witch's reign, but of her life. And that is why we had to be so cautious as we came along. For if she knew about you four, your lives wouldn't be worth a shake of my whiskers. Where... where's Edmund? Who saw him last? How long has he been missing? Is he outside? Edmund! Edmund! How awful! Where can he have got to? Come on, let's go in. What on earth are we to do, Mr. Beaver? Do? Do? We must be off at once. We haven't a moment to spare. We'd better divide into four search parties. Search parties? What for? To look for Edmund. There's no point in looking for him. What do you mean? He can't be far away yet, and we've got to find him. But we already know where he's gone. He's gone to the White Witch. He has betrayed us all. I'll show them. Them and their lion. 
I'll show them. Picking on the Queen. What do they know? Adam's flesh and Adam's bone. They are the evil ones. Glad I left. Couldn't stand to hear more bad things about the Queen. Probably half of it isn't true anyway. She was very nice to me. Much nicer than they are. I'll bet she's the real Queen. Anyway, she'll be better than that awful Aslan. When I'm King of Narnia, the first thing I shall do will be to make some decent roads. a great lion Aslan we were all talking about. She's caught him already and turned him into stone. So that's the end of all their fine ideas about him. Huh. Who's afraid of Aslan? It's all right. It's all right. It's only a storm move. It can't hurt me. Stand still, stranger. And tell me who you are. If, if you please, sir, my, my name is Edmund, and I met the Queen in the woods the other day, and, and I've come to give her the news that, that my brother and sisters are in Narnia, quite, quite close in the Beavers' house. She, she wanted to see them. I will tell her Majesty. Stand and wait if you value your life. Come in, come in, fortunate favorite of the queen, or else not so fortunate. Let me introduce myself. I'm Fenris Ulf, the chief of the queen's sacred place. I'm here, Your Majesty. Can I have my Turkish delight? How dare you come alone! Did I not tell you to bring the others with you? Please, Your Majesty. I've done the best I can. I brought them quite close. They're... They're in the little house on top of the dam with Mr. and Mrs. Beaver. Is this all your news? No. No, Your Majesty. Aslan is here, Mr. Beaver says something about a place called Stone Table. What? Aslan? Aslan? Is this true? If I find you have lied to me... Please, I'm only telling you what I heard. <coughs> Make ready our sled and use the harness without bells. Does that fool Aslan think he can rob me of my rights? He knows the deep magic better than that. I shall kill all four humans before they can reach the stone table. But as long as I have you, my fool, the prophecy cannot be fulfilled. Come, we must be off! Best keep down here as much as possible. She'll have to keep to the top. You couldn't bring a sled down here. Fenris! Fenris Elf! Take with you the swiftest wolves and go to the house of the beavers and kill whatever you find there. If they are already gone, 
make speed to the stone table, but do not be seen. Should you overtake the beavers and three humans with them, you will know what to do. I hear and obey, O oh Queen. Wow. Rip! Horror! <laughs> Wherever is this? It's an old hiding place for beavers in bad times, and a great secret. We'll be safe here till the storm lets up. Worry. Mr. Beaver can scramble among bushes and brambles without being seen. He'll see which way the witch's sled goes. It's all right. Come out, Mrs. Beaver. Come out, son of Adam and daughters of Eve. It's all right. It isn't her. Come on, come and see. This is a nasty knock for the witch. It looks as if her power is already crumbling. What do you mean, Mr. Beaver? Didn't I tell you that she'd made it always winter and never Christmas? Didn't I tell you? Well, just come and see. Now the Christmas has been here. The witch's magic is weakening. Aslan is on the move. See? Look around you. Spring is near. Mr. Fox, this is a glorious moment. This is the first time in many, many years that one can look forward to a Merry Christmas. Now then, now then, don't stand around talking. We must move on. True, true, we must go, we must go. Goodbye! Happy days! <laughs> Your Majesty's good health. Who gave the 
come to you. Father Christmas. Father Christmas. What? He has not been here. He cannot have been here. How dare you? Say you've been lying and you shall even now be forgiven. Don't! Please don't! They were here! They can't be too far ahead! Let that teach you! Drive on! They can't be far. Those wolves failed me! Hurry! It's thawing and that will cause the sled problems. I see them! We lost them. I think they stopped. It's no good, Your Majesty. The sled won't move. Then we must walk. We shall never overtake them walking. Not with the start they've got. Are you my counselor or my slave? Do as you're told. Tie the hands of the human creature behind it. Now then. Drive him ahead of us! We're going to overtake them, or I'll know the reason why not! The sheriff! The garbage! The garbage! Faster! Faster! On with you! Take me tank! Karuga Buri! Aslan's doing. If either of you mention that name again, you shall be instantly killed! One thing for sure, the witch won't be able to use her sled now that there's no snow, so we can take it a bit easier. First. No, sons of Adam before animals. Susan, what about you? Ladies first. No, you're the oldest. Aslan, we have come. Welcome, Peter, son of Adam. Welcome, Susan and Lucy, daughters of Eve. Welcome, he beaver and she beaver. 
But where is the fourth? He has betrayed us and joined the White Witch, O oh Aslan. That was my fault. I was angry with him, and I think that helped him go wrong. Please, Aslan, can anything be done to save Edmund? All shall be done. But it may be harder than you think. Meanwhile, children, I have something for each of you. Come to the pavilion. You may remove your coats. Winter is no more in Narnia. Son of Adam and daughters of Eve, these are the tools of your destiny. The time to use them is perhaps near at hand. Peter, son of Adam, the sword and shield are for you. It is a magic blade and will protect you well. Susan, daughter of Eve, the bow and arrows are for you. Use them only in great need. For I do not mean you to fight in battle. And whenever you put this horn to your lips and blow it, help will come to you. Lucy, Eve's daughter, in that bottle is a cordial made of the juice of the fire flowers that grow in the mountains of the sun. If you or any of your friends are hurt, a few drops will restore you. And the dagger is to defend yourself at great need, for you also are not to be in battle. Come, Peter. I will show you a far-off sight of the castle where you are to be king. That, O oh man, is Care Paravel of the Four Thrones, in one of which you must sit as king. I show it to you because you are the firstborn, and you will be high king over all the rest. It is your sister's horn. Back! Let the prince win his spurs. I see another wolf in the thickets. After him, all of you! Hand me your sword and kneel, son of Adam. Rise up, Sir Peter Fenris Bane. It's no use now, O oh Queen. They must have reached the stone table by now. Perhaps the wolf will bring us news. It cannot be good news if he does. Four thrones in Care Paravel. And if only three were filled, it would not fulfill the prophecy! What difference would that make now that, that, that he is here? He may not stay long. And then? We could fall upon the three at Care Paravel! Yes, it may be better to keep this one for bargaining oh. with. What, you fool? And have him rescued? Then we'd better do what we have to do at once. I've seen them. They're all at the stone table with him. They've killed my captain, Fenris Ulf. I was sitting in the thickets and saw it all. One of the sons of Adam killed him. Go quickly! Summon all our people to meet me here as speedily as they can! Call the ghouls and the buggles! The ogres and the minotaurs! Call the cruels, the hags, the specters, and the people of the toadstools! We will fight! Have I not still my wand? Will not their ranks turn into <laughs> stone even as they attack? Be off! I have unfinished business here. Now! 
We have no table. Let me see. We'd better put him against the trunk of a tree. <laughs> Prepare the victim! Wake up! Wake up! Your brother has been rescued. He's here in camp. Aslan is talking to him. Here is your brother. And there is no need to talk to him about the past. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm sorry, girls. That's, That's all right, right, Edmund. It's nice to have you back. Sire. There is a messenger from the enemy who craves audience. Let him approach. What is your message, son of Earth? The Queen of Narnia, an empress of the Lone Islands, desires a safe passage to come and speak with you on a matter which is as much to your advantage as to hers. Queen of Narnia, indeed, of all the nerve. Peace, Beaver. All names will soon be restored to their proper owners. Tell your mistress that I grant her safe passage on condition that she leaves her wand behind. So be it. It's agreed, O oh Queen, provided you leave your wand. You have a traitor there, Aslan. Well, his offense was not against you. Have you forgotten the deep magic? Let us say I have forgotten it. Tell us of this deep magic. Tell you? Tell you what is written on that table of stone? Tell you what is written in letters deep as a spear is long on the trunk of the world ash tree? Tell you what is engraved on the scepter of the emperor beyond the sea? You at least know the magic which the emperor put into Nanya at the very beginning. You know that every traitor belongs to me as my lawful prey, and that for every treachery, I have a right to a kill! Oh, so that's how you came to imagine yourself a queen, because you were the Emperor's hangman. Peace, Beaver. That human creature is mine. His life is forfeit to me. His blood is my property. <sighs> Come take it then. Fool, do you think your master can rob me of my rights by mere force? He knows the deep magic better than that. He knows that unless I have blood, 
as the law says, all Nernia will be overturned and perish in fire and water. It is very true. I do not deny it. Oh, Aslan, can't we do something about the deep magic? Isn't there something you can work against it? Work against the Emperor's magic? Fall back, all of you. And I will talk to the witch alone. has renounced the claim on your brother's blood. How do I know this promise will be kept? <laughs> we must move from this place at once. It will be wanted for other purposes. Pack quickly. We must encamp tonight at the ford of Beruna. fight the witch two ways. I? If things go well with you in the woods, she'll fall back to her castle. Me? You may or may not be able to cut her off and prevent her from reaching it. But you will be there yourself, Aslan. I can give no promise of that. She will not attack tonight. Can't you sleep either? No. I have a horrible feeling that something's wrong. As a matter of fact, so have I. Something about Aslan. I have a terrible feeling something dreadful is going to happen to him. There's been something wrong all afternoon. Lucy, what was that he said about not being with us at the battle? Where is he now? Is he here? I don't think so. Let's go outside and have a look round. We might see him. All right, let's go. Look! Let's follow him and see where he's going. Children, why are you following me? We couldn't sleep. Please, may we come with you, wherever you're going? Well, I should be glad of company tonight. You may come, if you promise to stop when I tell you. And after that, leave me to go on alone. Oh, thank you, thank you. We promise. on my mane so that I can feel you're there and let us walk like that. Oh, children. 
children, here you must stop. And whatever happens, do not let yourselves be seen. destroy them. Deploy our people all along the ridge. Mount guards and secure the ridge. The others rest. What a glorious day tomorrow shall be! I can't bear 
bear the look of that horrible muzzle. <laughs> I wonder if we could take it off. Why don't we untie him as well? <laughs> oh. Oh. doing? Can't they leave him alone? They're gnawing away at the ropes. They're friendly mice. Poor little things. <laughs> they don't realize he's dead. They think it'll do some good untying him. I guess there's nothing more we can do. I'm so cold. So am I. Let's walk about a bit. Which knew the deep magic, there is a magic deeper still which she did not know. Her knowledge goes back only to the dawn of time. But if she could have looked a little further back into the stillness and the darkness before time dawned, she would have read there a different incantation. She would have known that when a willing victim who had committed no treachery was killed in a traitor's stead, the table would crack, and death itself would start working backwards. And now, to business. Children, you must ride on me. We must get reinforcements. The battle at Maruna Ford is not going well. Thank you. 
everywhere. Upstairs and downstairs, leave no corner unsearched. Just in time, Aslan. It was all Edmund's doing. Once she broke her wand, we knew we had a chance. However, poor Edmund was terribly wounded. We must go and see him. Quick, Lucy. The cordial I gave you. There are others wounded. Yes, I know. I must tend to them. Hand me your sword. And kneel, Edmund.
or queen of Narnia. Always a king or queen. Fare it well, sons of Adam. Fare it well, daughters of Eve. Where's Aslan? I don't see Aslan. That's right. He was here, now he's gone. He'll be coming and going. One day you'll see him and another you won't. And of course, he has other countries to attend to. It's quite all right, he'll often drop in. Only you mustn't press him. So the years went by. King Peter, King Edmund, Queen Susan, and Queen Lucy ruled in great joy and peace. And if ever they remembered their life in the other world, it was only as one remembered a dream. Majesties, great news. The white stag has once more appeared in the forest. The white stag? The white stag is a magic being and will give you wishes if you catch him. think it'll be any good trying to go back to Narnia through the wardrobe. <laughs> you won't get there again by that route. But will we get to go back to Narnia, Professor? Yes, of course you'll get back to Narnia again someday. But don't go trying to use the same route twice. Indeed, don't try to get there at all. It'll happen when you're not looking for it. And don't talk too much about it, even among yourselves. And don't mention it to anyone else, unless you find that they've had adventures of the same sort. But how will we know? Oh, you'll know all right. Odd things they say, even their looks will let the secret out. Keep your eyes open. 
it's entirely possible that this is the end of your adventures in the wardrobe. But only the beginning of your adventures in Narnia.